Hey YouTube, today we're going to do some fork seals on some YZ 426s. We got a 2000 and a 2001 both. The, of course, they both have bad fork seals. Um, you see, this is the 2000 here. As you can see, the oil's all over the wheels, all dripping off here. Then on the 2001, both blew out at the same time on this one. So the first step of this process, of course, is going to be to get the bikes up off the ground because we need those the front ends to be dangling. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the front wheel, the front brake, um, fork guards, get the number plate off, and probably the, well, maybe the front fender. We'll see if that's going to be in the way or not. But we'll get it to that stage and we'll, we'll be back with you. All right, we got the 2001 up in the air. Just using a simple stand. You know, we just need this to be loose. Then we're going to go ahead and pull these, pull this front wheel. Pull the number plate, and then we should have pretty good access to loosen the bolts here and here to pull these forks right out. So Bruce here, he's going ahead and pulling this cover so we can get to our main axle nut. We can pull this front wheel off. This is white piece here. It's just one, one bolt, right, Bruce? Yeah. And that's going to give us access to this nut here. We'll pull that off, drive this axle through with a brass punch. And this whole front wheel will just drop right out onto the ground. And these right here are actually holding it from spinning, so we'll end up loosening this side while leaving this tight in order to break this loose. Then we'll pull these and drive it out. We'll All right, guys, we got to a point now we're ready to go ahead and pull the brake caliper we're just going to let that hang over here out of the way and the next thing we've already loosened these on both sides now we had to leave these tight to break the nut loose okay and we went ahead and loosened this side up and now we're ready to drive this pin out notice we're using brass softer than the steel bolt that's in there we do not want to screw up them threads or we'll never get it back on All right, never had one just pop out on the floor before, but hey, there it is. So now the wheel with the pin removed should come right out. Make sure you don't lose these. Should be one on each side. We'll clean those up before reinstallation. And now we got two fork tooths. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna loosen up these bolts here and here. But before we do, we might break this loose just a little bit so it's not hard to break loose once it's not mounted in the bike. So we'll go ahead and grab a wrench, break this loose, then we're going to loosen up these bolts, and then these will just slide right out. But we're just going to do one side at a time for this process as well. So we'll go ahead and start with the old registration side. Now as you see, we went ahead and broke our top bolt loose. These are loose. We didn't even do this side yet. We did break the top loose, but these are still tight. We're just doing the one fork at a time. Uh, it's a three-quarter inch wrench for the top, 10 millimeter here, here. Now a couple things you want to consider, first thing you want to do is make sure of course you've taken everything off, you don't want anything in the way. You don't want to screw up your registration sticker because you know it's federal property and we want to want to ruin that. And then another thing is sometimes you got to pry them open a little bit, the screwdriver. Nice and smooth and it should come out pretty easy at this point. And because we're up off the ground, it's not hitting the ground. And now the fork's ready to be rebuilt. So the next step's going to be to go ahead and pull this cap completely off. And we're going to go ahead and start draining the oil. Which, Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this top cap completely. And when it comes loose, this outer tube should drop down. Don't worry, it's not going to come springing apart up in your face like a lot of people fear. And as you remove parts, you want to set them somewhere clean and dry, too. So we need to have a place ready to go. So basically now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this cap from the center shaft so that we can pull the spring and other parts off. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove this cap from the center shaft so we can remove the spring and what have you. So by pulling down on this, you expose this nut. Put your 17 there. And then you break this loose. And with that off, 
the spring and those caps come right off. But this time you'll also go ahead and pull out There's your spring and then this little guy here, your dampening rod. Can't see it. Okay, now we're ready to just go ahead and dump the oil out right into the oil pan. And go ahead and pump it out. And then we'll be ready to clean it up and refill the fluid. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do now, we went ahead and cleaned it up here. We got it flipped over, we got it sitting on a rag because there's still a little bit of oil leaking out and we're making a little bit of a mess. But the next thing we want to do is go ahead and remove this here, which is the dust seal. And I got the thinnest little flathead I got and it's just enough to where kind of push it in and twist. See how it starts to lift? Alright, go ahead and turn it, Bruce. There, so we got the dust seal out. And almost a trip to the hospital. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Now I'm trying to show you here, we got this little clip right here. Basically goes all the way around. You want to find the end of it. Right here. And just pry it on out like so. It should just come out like that. Should and if. There we go. Then you got that little clip. And then what we're going to go ahead and do now, we're going to use like a, use it like a slide aimer and this fork seal is just going to come right out. You're going to hold the tube nice and firm and just lift. Maybe one or two good times here. Just like that. Now what we're going to want to do here is we got this ring here. We're going to take off first and set it in a spot. Then the second one here. Then there's this collar. And then there's actually the fork seal. And then the dust seal will slide off. And we'll go ahead and take all those off. And we're going to clean up this cylinder just a little bit more here. And basically we're going to reassemble it with the new dust seal and the new fork seal. But everything else in the exact reverse order as we're taking them off now. So we'll get this cleaned up. We'll get our new fork seals and dust seal ready. And All right, so what we got here is we don't have a special tool that you need to do this. So what we did is we've used a condom in the past, but we don't have any. So what we got here is just a regular sandwich baggie. And then we took a little bit of the fork oil, or in our case, we're using ATF. You can make your own mind up on what you want to use. I don't recommend anything. You just do what you, do what you want to do. So we got a little on there for lubrication and now what Bruce is going to do is in the same order as he took them off, he's going to start with the dust seal, making sure of course it's not upside down or anything. And with the baggies help, it, it's not going to be easy but if you don't have the tool, this is the way to do it right here. And he's going to go and push that down, then of course the dust seal, or the dust seal and the fork seal of course. Usually isn't going that easy but I've done this a couple times. <laughs> And you don't necessarily, yeah, like he's throwing that off. We don't need that for the metal rings here, but we got the three metal rings in the same order as they came off. They'll go back on. That one snaps into its little groove. Make sure it's in it. And there, now you're ready to reassemble the two fork halves. And basically what we're going to do now is show you how that's done. So we'll get this flipped over, we'll get our tube ready and our little homemade tool which we'll show you on that too. Alright so basically what we have here is we took the old fork seal and we, we cut it with a good pair of uh, wire cutters and then what we actually did was we made the clean cut and then we took about a quarter inch off of one end so that when it's in its normal shape there's going to be a gap like that. And this is what we're going to use as a driver because we don't have a seal driver. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to go and, we'll go and pull this up. So all we did was just go ahead and flip this over and stuck it in the tube here. And then the, only, the 
metal pieces will stay down in here but what you got here is you got your fork seal and the dust seal and we're going to use the dust seal to start the dust seal or the oil seal so get it started bruce let's go ahead and just use it like a slide hammer hold on go ahead and set it down so then what we're going to use is a screwdriver and it'll go ahead and pull the dust seal back out just like before just get it up out of the way but what that's going to do is it's going to start that seal so that it's all you got to do is finish it now and that's where this is going to come in handy now I don't think you should put it in upside down I don't recommend that I always would put it the way it's supposed to be in just open it up try not to actually put like a crease in it because then it becomes harder to push down in there but and you just want to go in like so Push it down in as best you can. Not easy. Like I said, it's not easy, but you can do it if you don't have the tools. All right, we're in. Now what we're going to do is go and lift the dust seal back up, and then with that little gap I mentioned, let me show the gap real quick. See that real good? See that? Because we cut that off, you just go in like so, comes right out. Okay, go ahead and just open that back up. All right, so we got the fork seal tool that we had made out. And the next thing we want to do here is you see we got the snap ring back in there. And we want to just kind of line it up, push it down in with our fingers. And it should snap in there, and then we take that screwdriver, as you can see, and we're going to push it down, and you should just feel it just snap right in place, and then you know that's in place. And then what we can go ahead and do is push our dust seal back down, get it lined up. All right, so what we did here is we just flipped it over, and we're just going to slide hammer action. We're just going to go ahead and just pop that seal, seal right there, the dust seal in place. And one more good one. Give it a good one. Um. Alright guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to get this oil level right. And what we did, we went ahead and looked up this information prior to this like seven times ago when we did our four seals. And basically, there's a certain level from the top of this that the oil should be. Ours is five and just a little bit. Like five and basically like an eighth of an inch is the way we look at it. And there's a special tool you put on here where you just overfill your forks, suck it out until it just sucks air and you're at the right level. But without that special tool, what we have here is just a, basically a stainless steel, well, I don't know about stainless, but it's the steel ruler. And we got about five in a little bit here. And he's going to just pour in a little bit of oil and then I'll bring it down until my measuring stick is at the right level, pull it out. And I go down to a five and a quarter. And there should be an eighth of an inch of oil on the end of the dipstick when we're at the right level. What he's doing is just activating the piston, trying to get all the air bubbles, sucking in all that oil into the uh, inside cylinder there. You can basically pump it until you quit hearing and feeling the air bubbles. And there's still a little air in there, so we're going to go ahead and just run a little more fluid through this and then when we start getting close I'll show you how we check the level. Alright so we, I'm going to show you what it's like when you get all the air out. Smooth and smooth. No gurgling or nothing. And it's not easy to pull that up and down either by the way and it really will do a number on your fingers so have fun with that. So now we're going to just add a little oil try to find where we're at and add a little until we get to the level where we need to be at, which is a little bit, a little over five. So now we're just going to add a little oil at a time here, just a little bit at a time, and then check our level. There we go. See, there's just a little on the end of the stick. And I went into a five and a quarter, and there's an eighth of an inch on there, so we're at a five and an eighth. 
exactly right where we want to be. So now we can go ahead and reassemble. All right, guys, what we're doing now is we're going to, we went ahead and slid the tube all the way down. The seals are installed, the dust seals installed, it's all clean. And we're just going to pull this up out of the center, go ahead and put the spring back in. Then you're going to put your dampening rod back in the top hole there. Okay, and then we're ready to go ahead and tighten that cap back on the top like we did the first or when we removed it, just exact opposite. And that thing likes to drop down, so you got to lift it up. And it helps me out a little hand. Down, get the wrench on. <clears throat> All right, nice and tight. I'm just gonna pull the spring down so I can get the wrench out of there, and bam! Now you just simply lift the outer tube up towards the top and thread it on. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide it back up into the hole. I don't got a sticker to worry about on this one. All right, so if you get stuck like this, it's a little trick you can do with a flathead screwdriver. While he's lifting, I'm just gonna pry it open a little bit. Makes it slide in. Now we're trying to line up right there. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten here. Tighten here, and then tighten here. All right, so now that we got all these tightened up up top here, we're gonna go ahead and go and put the wheel back in. Uh, first thing we're gonna have to do here is we gotta make sure these are lined up. You know, these on top, that one as well. That way our bolt will go through when we try to put it in. And then Bruce is gonna go ahead and have the wheel. Remember to make sure that these are in place. This one. While Bruce is holding the wheel up, I'm gonna, and it's best to do this with the brake uninstalled. Put the brake on after. So the axle's through, and Bruce is gonna go ahead and just get the nut on the other side. It's started. We're not tightening it up quite yet. And what we're gonna do is, the first thing we're gonna do is tighten this side. And that's gonna lock the axle in place to allow us to go ahead and go ahead and bring that nut tight. So with the 10 millimeter. Now with that side tight, the axle's in place. You can go ahead and tighten the nut down until it's secure. And there's a torque spec for this too, but we just go nice and tight. If you want to get fancy, we can look it up. But as the title describes, actually, it's not going to. Right. And with those tight, the next thing you do is go ahead and just reinstall your brake, fork guards, number plate, and you're ready to ride. All right, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Bruce, and as always, I'm Ray. Subscribe, comment, like this video. And that's how you do fork seals without tools on a YZ426. Thanks for watching.